Hey, good morning. Uh, kind of a news bo- uh, podcast for you, thrown in in the middle of the month rather than kind of at the end of the month. But this is kind of crazy times we're dealing with. So try to keep this short and to the point. So this is our podcast for March the 20th, 2020. And we'll kick off with the obvious, the coronavirus uh, number 19 and some of the precautions. The American Heart Association has put out some of the precautions to use. We are still running classes, one class a day. Uh, Mannequins are getting wiped down. The masks are getting wiped down, uh, short of wiping the person down. Everything's being done to protect them from the mannequins, them from us. The class size is no more than five, so we are reducing the size of the class. Uh, And so far, we are capable of running one class a day. Some of our classes only have one student in it. So we're still able to offer a service to our mainly medical providers because they're the ones that kind of still need this. Uh, So we're still doing it. So remember that uh, it can still be done, but for the most part, uh, most of our classes in the field have literally come to a complete standstill. So we're not doing any group classes out there for construction companies. Uh, Some of our government contracts, everything's pretty much shut down. So we'll have to see when that kicks back off again. And and, uh, I'm sure that you guys are going through the exact same issues that we are. Uh, All small businesses are. One of the things that Hart has talked about is using a mask and one-way valve. Okay. And so what I have here is a thing called a Practi valve. And if you look in the magazines and in the literature, it talks about these Practi valves as being a one-way valve. They are not. A one-way valve allows the air to go into the patient, but re-diverts the air coming out so that the air does not come back out the same mouthpiece you're blowing into. That's what makes it a one-way valve. These, you can blow the air that direction, you can blow the air this direction. Okay, so these are not one-way valves. Your one-way valves run about $5 a piece. They're available, you know, online. You can buy those. Um, from almost anybody, but make sure that it truly is a one-way valve. It's the same valve that will come with your pocket mask. When you open your pocket mask up, this is what the one-way valve looks like. You blow in here. These have little filters on them, but the bottom line is the air will not go back out this direction. It's re-diverted back out the bottom of this so it does not come back out this mouthpiece. That's what makes it a one-way valve. Okay, this is what you need if you use certain type mannequins. Okay, so the Practi valve will fit your pocket mask, so they can be used on the pocket mask very well. Almost any your bag valve mask; these are all calibrated the same size, so it can be used on those masks as well. Here's the issue: if you're using a layer doll mannequin. And that was the beginning of Annie's. That's the beginning of mannequins that I started working with. All the Laerdal mannequins exhale at the back of their heads. They actually have a one-way valve built into the lungs. So that when you blow into the lungs and the air comes back out, it does not come back out the mouth of the mannequin. It comes out the back of the head. Okay, so they've got a one-way valve built into the system. So you can use Practi valves if, in fact, you're using the Laerdal mannequins. If you're using the mannequins that you got to put a full lung bag in each time, then Practi valves will not work for you. You must use the one-way valves. Okay? This is what you need if you're going to use those other type mannequins. If you're using Laerdal mannequins, you can get by with Practi valves. Okay? So again, the mask is completely wiped down and cleaned. These are single use for the student that's using them, and then we tell them just to throw them away because they can't really be used in the field on anything because they're not one-way valves. Okay? Hopefully that was enough said about one-way valves and practi valves. Okay? Okay, again, we're still running classes every day. Um, I wish we were had more classes to run, and who knows when this is going to end. So this is going to be interesting. As a result of that, we've gotten a few of our instructors that want to do Skype training kind of like a classroom for their people via Skype. That's kind of a great idea. Uh, It's no different than the Heart Association where we send our students to the Heart Association. Their online is interactive. It's it's really a good program. 
However, it costs the students, I think it's like $28, $29, something like that, for them to take that online portion. Keep in mind, though, when they do that, they also get an ebook with that. So that kind of makes up for some other issues, too. With that said, yeah, if you want to put together a Skype training, but remember, even though you do a Skype training for the person and you sit there with them and go through all the stuff, they still need to do skills. They still have to come in and work on the mannequins and demonstrate their actual skills. So, and part of this works fine. Part two, no, you still need to have them come in. You can schedule them like every hour apart or something like that so that you've got one student at a time so you have plenty of time to decon between students. Uh, that's certainly possible. The only other thing I would like to do is if you decide to like do a, a, a Skype type training and put that on YouTube before you release it to everybody to use, send a copy to me so I can actually look at it and make sure there are no mistakes in your training video. Okay, the worst thing we can do is have you out there saying, you know, compress the forehead, blow into the ear, and that's part of your training video, then that goes out to all these people. So no, let us look at it first, make sure everything looks okay, no glaring mistakes or errors, and then we'll come back and say, that, you know, that's this ready to go, you feel free to use it. Okay? So kind of a neat idea. So I'm glad folks are starting to think outside the box as to how we deal with this issue of the virus, but still be able to do our training and continue our education for our medical personnel. Starting shortly, we will be reducing hours here at PPM. Okay, why? Because like I said, we are getting very few orders for cards. Uh, most of our orders seem to come in on the Monday. So this coming in from the weekend type thing. And then on Friday, because they're getting ready for a weekend class or something like that. So we will fill orders on Mondays and Fridays for right now. During the week, no. So if you put an order in Tuesday, expect, expect that order to go out on Friday. Okay. As we begin to get more uh, orders in, we will begin to add more time that we're going to be sending orders out. So it's just a matter of trying to keep PPM's doors open as well as your doors open. Okay. Now, monitoring classes, uh, two ways to look at this. First, it's getting more difficult to monitor your class because there's not that many classes that are actually running, and certainly we understand that. Many of us are stuck at home with the family, okay? So we are quarantined or shelter in place so that you really don't have anybody out there, but you got the family right there with you. So the other way to look at this is why not teach your family CPR? You've got the equipment, you've got your family, they can't get away from you, they're stuck in there with you. So do a CPR class for the family. And then we'll monitor that class. So you get monitored, you get everything done, and the family should be taught CPR anyway. So it's kind of a way to force you to teach your family uh, CPR, but that works too. So we can look at it a couple different ways and that all these different ways we're trying to make this kind of uh, work in these crazy times that we're going through right now. Remember, and I don't have to tell you, it's on the news, that trying to maintain limited contact, and like I said, we're having all of our students, if they've been exposed, not to come, if they're running any fever, if they think they're sick, and especially, again, if they've been exposed. So if they've been in contact with somebody that may have the virus, then tell them, delay, and we'll work with them later, you know, once everything's cleared up, then bring them in and do them separately. So keep that in mind as we try to keep this thing to a limited number of people. Uh, the term flatten the curve is being overused, but the flatten the curves our medical uh, hospitals and providers uh, can handle. Okay, as a first responder myself, I certainly remember those concepts of we run in where angels fear to tread. So special shout out to the to the gang that does that protect yourself the best you can and remember to decon yourself well before you go back home to the family so you don't take it back to them okay good luck with everything and thanks for listening to my monitor again keep your fingers crossed let's get through this together bye